So as you can see here, my name is Anna. Um, I'm a senior technical writer at Talkdesk, uh, where I've been working for four years now. Uh, I remember the first time I got into, not really into technical writing, but became aware of technical communication and technical writing. Uh, it was when I was uh, 15 years old. I just, I had bought this sophisticated uh, Casio uh, graphing calculator and I showed it to my cousin and she said, oh, you have this uh, calculator, it is amazing. You can make calculations to get a rocket and go fly to the moon and back. I was like, really, how do you know? I, I have a friend and he can do all sorts of things. So I asked, but did they taught him that in math school? And she said, no, he just read the user guide. And I was like, okay. So there are actually people who bother to read user guides and people who actually write them. So this always, always stuck, uh, stuck, stuck with me in the back of my mind. Uh, because I, I've always loved writing and I thought, okay, maybe one day I'll get to, to write uh, useful instructions to help people with their daily needs. And uh, yeah, that happened um, some years later. And uh, yeah, now I've been working as a, a, t a technical writer for four years. So um, now about what I will be talking to you today, I'll briefly make uh, some quick information, give you some quick information about what Talkdesk is and what it, it does. Then I'll jump more into more depth regarding the developer portal journey, and then a brief analysis, and then we'll have some time for Q&A. So if you have questions, please bear with me and save them, save them for, for the, the end of the session. I'll be glad to, to help you. I hope this presentation is useful to you and appreciate you taking the time for, for listening to me. So please enjoy. So Talkdesk as a company, I don't know if you're familiar with Talkdesk, but it is a company that develops a cloud contact center platform for companies of all different sizes, different industries and for, from different parts of the globe. It was created in 2011 uh, in Lisbon, in Portugal, after the founders who, are, uh, who were engineers participated in a Twilio hackathon just to, to win a MacBook Pro uh, laptop, and they did. Uh, after that, they founded the company, the company started growing, and um, seven years later, in 2018, uh, Talkdesk became the third Portuguese unicorn um, in the start startup world. A unicorn is a company that is evaluated in over $1 billion. Uh, and then in 2021, Talkdesk reached the status of Decacorn, which is a company evaluated in over $10 billion. Currently, we have about uh, 1,200 employees from Portugal, the US, China, etc. Oh, sorry. Uh, these are some of our customers. I believe you're familiar uh, with most of these logos. So like I said, we have a very diverse segment of customers and partners. And now moving on to the developer, um, Docklesk developer portal. So, this is the first page um, you see when you enter the Talkdesk developer documentation. You can reach it, reach it at uh, docs.talkdesk.com. Uh, as you can see in the top menu, the first four buttons um, are very specific to the documentation. The other ones are uh, for external links, also content related to Talkdesk, of course. But the main four buttons um, are all about the documentation. Uh, the documentation, the developer documentation is divided into main sections. So we have uh, on our developer portal uh, a series of sections um, dedicated to Talkdesk self-service products. And these kind of products are products that are able to be used uh, in an aut autonomous way by our customers and partners, which means that you can get these products and tailor them so that they can be more customized and to better meet your needs. And then we have also um, documentation regarding public APIs, whether gener in general uh, availability or early access. And then um, inside the, the API documentation, we have two types of section, which are the guides uh, that I call the more conceptual doc documentation, where everyone can understand and see what that API does and can accomplish. And then the other part, which is the most technical part, uh, and it's the endpoint documentation on a whole different section, but they are intertwined. I will show that uh, in a bit. 
So this is an example um, of a page with information about uh, self-service product. In, in this case, it's the TalkDesk partner project. Uh, this product allows um, the user to easily register and manage their partner apps, generate off clients, get um, app reviews, get uh, scopes um, for a submitted app, and then to use APIs, it's self-service. The client is able to use it on their own and to make it customized so it, it can better um, meet their business needs. Uh, here you can see an example of an API, a public API on general uh, availability, availability page. All the APIs uh, follow this structure. It's uh, a template to make sure there is consistency um, across pages and across documentation. So first we start with an overview, which is a small summary explaining what the API does. Then a business context section, uh, which is a recent addition, so that it's better for anyone that has no technical knowledge to understand if this API can be useful or not without entering in technical detail. Then we have use cases, which are real life examples with uh, potential scenarios of what you can uh, achieve with a certain API. Uh, access and registration information, authentication, it's the same for all APIs. And then on usage, um, you get the list of the API endpoints, which are, imagine the task you can execute, a specific task you can execute and achieve with the API. On the, in this case, we have five um, endpoints. And if you click on each one of them, it will take you to re the respective page in a different section, which is the API section, which is this. It's the same um, st uh, strategy, always the same structure for all um, endpoint pages. You can see here, it's super technical. You have code snippets, scopes, um, body schemas, all kind of um, technical information, responses. So this is how when you actually um, intend to use this API or this endpoint, and you are a developer who wants to, to use this, this endpoint. Other than that, um, we have also another secondary section that I mentioned earlier. They were also added um, early this year, it, so they're new. It's discussions and developers blog. So discussions, it's a normal forum where anyone can go and post a question. They don't even have to, to register. They just have to enter the question and their name and email and post the, the question. And then you can also check um, the other questions that were previously posted by other users and maybe um, benefit from that information. Anyone can, can see this. You don't have to register. It's totally open, totally public. Uh, the developer's blog. Um, it's uh, a blog that anyone within the company can, can use, can write articles and make them available. Um, I am always available to assist them because I help them uh, with their writing. Um, with, I try to coach them in, into better writing. I edit the articles and uh, I post them also. You have to be um, a developer in TalkDesk uh, to post articles here. And usually the teams, that, the, the teams and the developers that post here uh, are also involved in the teams that develop, or, that develop the self-serve products and the APIs that you can see um, on the documentation. So basically they write about technologies that they use or any ideas they have with improving um, their work and with developing and improving the APIs and the products we have on the documentation. It's also public. Um, they follow a, a same structure with an introduction, then with different um, development stages, sub-levels, and then they end always with a conclusion and with the contact of the author, with, who is a, generally a developer or a product manager, so that anyone reading uh, and interested in the, the technology or in the content itself can get in touch with the author. Now, uh, regarding the operations, the backstage uh, part, uh, if you will, um, this is a team effort. Uh, it's a collaboration that involves a lot of stakeholders. So obviously we have the technical writers that uh, actually write, edit and post the documentation who are supported by uh, mostly a senior director of platform to ensure there is 
constant alignment with product with the product development and with the APIs, and also uh, support by a senior knowledge manager to make sure the documentation is up to date and there is consistency consistency across this developer documentation and other talk desk documentation. Then uh, there is close work with product managers and software developers because they are the ones that develop the product and APIs featured on the documentation. So they provide guidance in, a, in the most technical aspect. Then we get also feedback and insights from designers regarding the UI and UX of the information of the whole um, portal. Also, we get feedback from professional services because they are the ones who are in touch with the customers and with the partners. They are on the field, so they provide us very useful and concrete uh, feedback. And also the partners and customers themselves, sometimes via organic emails, they say, okay, this wasn't clear for me, can you please change that? And sometimes we do actual interviews just to obtain um, feedback regarding the documentation because partners and customers um, are also end, end users of the documentation. Uh, now a quick overview over the metrics we track. So we use um, README, which is the provider that um, gives us the platform that we use to write, edit, and host the documentation. So we re rely on the metrics they provide. And they provide metrics uh, for the endpoint pages regarding API calls, top endpoints used, API errors, and then on the guide section. So we track information regarding page views, new users, page quality, um, and search. We also have an integration with Google Analytics to provide to get more external met metrics and to have different um, perspe perspectives that README doesn't provide. And our approach regarding metrics is obviously very data driven. We put always the user in the center in the center of everything we want to update and to improve. We try to start by identify and address their challenges. We always prioritize updates. For instance, if I'm having a normal work day and by some reason I get a ticket saying, or a team member says to me, okay, Anna, so this is no longer um, up to date. Please make these changes because we made some developments and this API is not no longer working like that. I have to stop everything and make sure that the documentation uh, reflects the new development because the information was already live and if there's one thing that we can provide, it's not accurate or information that isn't true. So we make sure that everything that is live, it's, it's true and is useful. Otherwise, we might as well not have anything there. So we try to refine uh, everything to meet our users needs and to always provide um, truth. So obviously, the um, development teams regarding APIs and products um, are very helpful because they are the ones who can let me know what the evolution of the product or the API is and how I must act to reflect those changes on the documentation. And also, uh, documentation, as you know, is, is live based. So you, ha you have to work on a continuous improvement ecosystem, get constant feedback, um, get insights, and make sure everything is up to date and is useful and meeting the end user's needs. Uh, now regarding accessibility, which is the main topic for today. So in a general user inclusion, inclusion manner, so we are, like I said, very user um, centric. So we try to make sure the documentation is uh, accessible and easy to understand and clear for all different kinds of, of people because we have a huge segment of companies and of customers and partners that um, have to rely on the documentation. So we have to make sure that people with div different um, English fluency levels and proficiency are able to understand uh, what we are trying to tell them. So for this, we use simplified um, technical English to try to get a more neutral language tone. We also make sure to have um, different region access easy to understand to everyone. So we have base URLs included in all API end endpoint pages. So you don't have to jump around pages to see what the base URL is for your region because we have um, three regions available, um, Europe, US, and Canada. So we try to make sure 
that the content is uh, easy to access uh, via hyperlinks and that is located um, in all API endpoint pages so that you don't have to be jumping around. We also try to be inclusive regarding users with uh, special needs, in this case with visual impairment. So we also rely on the tools that uh, README, the platform provides. So for instance, uh, we use the README use specific HTML labels to allow for compatibility with accessibility tools. Uh, README also uses features like um, aerial labels that are attributes that can be added to HTML uh, elements um, to provide more information. And we also emphasize color contrast, uh, trying to balance with our branding colors to ensure that we have an optimal experience for users with several um, impairments such as color blindness and other types of uh, limitations. We have comp compatibility with assistive technology, so you can use screen readers um, on the documentation. Uh, while we're writing regarding the, the edition of, of any text, we use caption and alt text features on in image so that users that are using screen readers can actually access the images and have a better understanding of what the images are uh, representing. Yeah, um, this is all from me now. We have some time for Q&A, so I'll just leave my contact information here. Thank you so much for listening to me. I hope that you enjoyed my presentation and that it will be useful somehow. And um, yeah, so I'll be taking your questions now. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, let me ask the same question first while the others are typing what they want to ask. Um, what part uh, do you feel um, a traditional documentation system, and I'm not asking about README itself, but the way um, the way we think about creating documentation and, pub and presenting it, what part of that systemically, yeah, gives resistance against maybe being simplified or uh, accessible uh, with tools, any of that, that, that you experience that it's not so, that there's turbulence. Yeah, so I think that you have two different things to consider. You have aesthetics and you have content. Mm -hmm. So regarding access, uh, aesthetics, you have to consider the colors and uh, make it balanced also with your branding because that's important for the DNA of the company. And then you have the content uh, expert, which is you try to make everything uh, with with the same structure. You try to write in the same tone and have a similar structure across all the documentation so that people can find a feel of your tone and things feel less strange when they jump into different sections of the documentation. Um, and it's very hard to do that. It's a challenge because, like I said, in cases that we ha you have people accessing documentation from all over the world with different cultures, it all messes with the way that people will perceive the information you are providing. So trying to find a balance between aesthetics, tone, consistency, and keeping things as simple as possible, that would be my answer for everything. You know, just keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember um, any In hindsight, obvious aha moments in, in where your mindset about writing documentation changed so that it's more inclusive to others. Uh, yeah. Um, like I said, this year, we, we I changed the, the templates of the API uh, documentation just by, editing, by adding a business context um, section so that it felt obvious okay so i'm writing what the api actually does what it doesn't do but should could be expected this seems obvious to me but it won't be obvious for someone that isn't uh, as familiar as the api is like i am so it's it's challenging for the writer to step out of his shoes and to put himself on the reader's shoes and by providing um, this section that is totally centered on what you can concretely do with the api and not all about technicality but what, how it can help you on your daily tasks in this case, because we write documentation um, for contact center, what you can achieve as an admin uh, in a contact center with the API, just by 
making it more approachable and less technical, it can be a huge help. Mm -hmm. make, make it more, more familiar and less technical. Uh, mm -hmm. So actually saying, OK, you are an admin, you have, have this company, this is what you can do with it. Just translating everything, making it less technical and more familiar, it will help people for sure consume the API and understand how it can help them without you know being constantly emailing support and asking for engineering, so how they should do this and that. It can be a huge step to first step to actually help them integrate with our systems. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you habitually do in your role um, connected to documentation that uh, in the beginning you found counterintuitive? If you remember. Uh, counterintuitive. Yeah, maybe documenting endpoints because I'm not an engineering by training. Um, I've always been a writer. Uh, I have a degree, a master's degree in communication and uh, I was a journalist by training. So writing the most technical part of technical documentation was a bit uh, counterintuitive for me because you have to understand, you don't have to pr program, but you have to understand how languages work. Um, that, that was maybe the best example I, I can give you. Mm -hmm. And to whatever extent you are, you can disclose it. What are your future plans for the development of the documentation? So um, I'd like to get, I'd, I'd like to start to coach more, to become a mentor, to pass on my knowledge. I'd like to become a more proficient uh, public speaker. Um, I have done presentations regarding APIs previously and I want to do more and eventually uh, write my own article or blog or even a book, who knows. Mm -hmm. uh, Docs for Developers is a, a huge reference for me and I'd like to be an author. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that would be a, a nice future for me. And I'm looking forward to hearing your presentation at API Days in, in Paris this December. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you very much. And thank you for having me. It was our honor and uh, a pleasure. And if somebody would like to ask further questions, I think they can find you in the hallway track. Uh, and uh, also, uh, we have the coffee tables after uh, Sarah's presentation. Sure. Thank you for having me. Thank you again.